Welcome to Mission Possible with Mr. Review. I'm here to make the complex simple and the confusing clear. Today, we do the right stuff. How to write in FRQ. Shakespeare was my teacher. I'll never forget his words. Is this a dagger which I see before me? Nonsense, I said. It's a pen. Use it and live. Let's look at my tips when writing in FRQ. 1. Read the question carefully. 2. Organize your answer exactly as given in the question. Use that negative space appropriately. 3. Use the exact vocabulary from the question in your answer. 4. Methodically link back your answer to the exact vocabulary in the question. Brain drain. Provide more than what is asked for. If they ask for one, go ahead and give two. Be specific. No pronouns. Write legibly. And finally, proofread. Have I answered the question as asked? Let's practice these tips in a question. Here it is. Many scholars and observers have argued that the ratification of the 14th Amendment to the Constitution has become the single most important act in all of United States politics. A. Identify which provision of the 14th Amendment was applied in one of the following Supreme Court cases. For the cases you select, explain the significance of the decision in United States politics. The cases are Brown v. Board, Baker v. Carr, Regents of the University of California v. Bakke. B. Identify which provision of the 14th Amendment was applied in one of the following Supreme Court cases. For the cases you select, explain the significance of the decision in United States politics. The cases are Mapp v. Ohio, Gideon v. Wainwright, and Miranda v. Arizona. This question asks us to do three distinct tasks twice. Three distinct tasks in A and three distinct tasks in B. Those tasks are identify an appropriate provision of the 14th Amendment. Two, discuss how that provision was used in one of the cases. And three, explain how that case was significant to U.S. politics. Let's dive in. A. When looking at these three cases, Brown, Baker, and Bakke, these are all civil rights cases. The civil rights provision in the 14th Amendment is equal protection. Let's choose Brown. In Brown v. Board of Education, the Supreme Court applied the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment. The Brown v. Board of Education case desegregated the schools. Segregation deprived the plaintiffs of the equal protection of the laws under the 14th Amendment. But how is this significant to the broader U.S. politic? In the case Brown v. Board of Education, the civil rights movement was nudged. In Brown v. Board of Education, the equal protection as applied led to the civil rights movement. But remember, it asks for one, but why not give two? The equal protection clause was applied to the Bakke case. In the Bakke case, the admissions program violated the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment. 
the Baki case was significant to U.S. politics because it led to a debate, an argument over the limits to affirmative action. Let's look to B. B asked for another provision of the 14th Amendment. In the cases Mapp, Gideon, and Miranda, these are civil liberty cases. The provision of the 14th Amendment dealing with our civil liberties is due process. Let's choose Mapp. The due process clause of the 14th Amendment was applied in the case Mapp v. Ohio. In Mapp v. Ohio, the Supreme Court applied the exclusionary rule to the states. The effect of the Fourth Amendment upon the states through the operation of the Due Process Clause of the Fourteenth Amendment. But why was this significant to U.S. politics? The case Mapp v. Ohio was significant to U.S. politics because it provided an example of the incorporation doctrine. In Mapp v. Ohio, the Supreme Court applied the Fourth Amendment to the states for the first time. But remember, let's do two cases. The Due Process Clause of the Fourteenth Amendment was applied in the case Gideon v. Wainwright. In Gideon v. Wainwright, the Supreme Court applied the Sixth Amendment right to counsel to the states. Certain fundamental rights safeguarded by the Bill of Rights also safeguarded against state action by the Due Process Clause of the Fourteenth Amendment. The significance of Gideon again The case Gideon v. Wainwright is significant to U.S. politics because it provides another example of the incorporation doctrine being used. In Gideon, the right to counsel was applied to the states, thus providing an example of the incorporation doctrine. This is how you write an FRQ. Let's be reminded of the tips. 1. Read the question carefully. 2. Organize your answer exactly as given. 3. Use exact vocabulary from the question again and again. Methodically link back the question into your answer. Brain drain. Provide more than what is asked. Be specific. No pronouns, write legibly, and remember, proofread, have I answered the question as asked? As my teacher would say, the world is our stage. Make it script with some panache. FRQ, FRQ, wherefore art thou, FRQ? Today, We're learning how to do the right stuff. Welcome to Mission Possible with Mr. Review. I'm here to make the complex simple and the confusing clear. 